Fear came back into the market in a very big way. What we know now is Wall Street can bring down Main Street. People are seeing this, and those memories of fear are coming back. When you have a 401k or a 403b, those kinds of accounts, they are incredibly susceptible to downturns. The Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped more than 900 points. More than 900 points. There are questions about how to best save for retirement. Part of the problem is confusion. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. The first rule on investment is don't lose. And the second rule on investment is don't forget the first rule. And that's all the rules there are. When the market goes up, you go up. When the market goes down, you don't go down. Save Money Radio, your money safe and sound. Welcome to Safe Money Radio with your host, Brad Pistol. Brad is a retirement and income specialist, primarily serving Springfield, but he's sought after nationally for his expertise in helping people secure their retirements. Mr. Pistole is a licensed life insurance professional in the states of Missouri, Arkansas, and Kansas, and he specializes in working with people who are near retirement and those who have already retired with wealth management, income planning, and asset protection strategies. And now, here to talk with you about securing your retirement, your host, Brad Pistole. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us again today for Safe Money Radio. We have a very special guest with us on today's show, so stay with us. If you're listening on the radio, we just want you to know this is actually going to be on YouTube. You'll be able to watch today's show. Because we have a very special guest, a good friend of mine, Dr. Wade Fowl, who's been on the show twice before, he's with us today, and I will tell you this, we're going to talk about something on today's show that we have never talked about in 15 years, so you want to stay with us. So, friends, if you've never heard Dr. Wade Fowl before, I just want to say this, I think I'm guilty of, and a lot of people in, in financial planning are guilty of throwing out the names of a lot of famous people, people with big educational backgrounds who speak all over the country. And we kind of geek out about those things, but we fail to realize that sometimes maybe you aren't as familiar with those people as we are. So you'll always hear me say, Dr. Wade Fowl, Dr. Michael Finca, Ed Slott, Tom Hegna, Heather Schreiber. And I want to just slow down for a second. (laughs) Welcome all of you to being on the show with us today. And, and, And if you're watching, you can see Dr. Fowl with us today. But I just want to have Wade, if he would, share with us for a few minutes here at the beginning and tell us a little bit about your background for our listeners who maybe aren't familiar with you. Sure. And thanks again for having me on the show, Brad. Yeah, it's the third time I'm working my way up to five times so I can earn my Safe Money Radio shirt as well. But uh, it's great great to be here. My background is really on more the academic side of retirement planning. And I, I did economics in college and graduate school. Economics can be really uh, mathematical at the research level, but financial planning is really applied economics. And so I found my way into financial planning, into retirement planning in particular. I I served, my my job title for 10 years was Professor of Retirement Income at the American College of Financial Services, which I think was a unique job title. Nobody else had that job title as far as I'm aware. Uh, Helped with, uh, and the designation that you have, the Retirement Income Certified Professional Designation. I was program director for that. I've written four books on different retirement topics, uh, including today, (laughs) Safety First Retirement Planning, if you're you're watching the video feed. Uh, My first book, too, was on reverse mortgages. Uh, And really, uh, we can even talk about this with reverse mortgages. I was always trying to write the Retirement Planning Guidebook, and that's my fourth book. It's really a comprehensive look at all aspects of retirement planning. And just as I was writing the chapters for that, some of those chapters got so long that I realized they could be spun off as individual books. And that's how the reverse mortgage book came around. I got so fascinated with the research about reverse mortgages and how they can be used and how they work that I ended up writing a chapter that was 120 pages or 140 pages. And okay, that's a book by itself. So, wow. so that, that's really the, the genesis of it. And then also uh, the listeners of your show may have had the opportunity to take the retirement income style awareness. And I've been on your show before to talk about that with Alex Margia. 
an assessment tool to just help people get moving in the right direction with their retirement plans. And I, I know you've offered that to your listeners. And thank you so much for helping to promote the concept where really hope it can help give people a, a good understanding of what their preferences are so that they can sort through all the conflicting advice out there about retirement to find a strategy that's right for them. Fantastic. And if you're listening right now and you've never heard of what Dr. Faust talking about, just know this. We, we call it the RESA and that stands for Retirement Income Style Awareness. And you can go online and take it. But if you'll call us and just connect with us, we will send you a link and let you take that free of charge. So call us anytime at 866-780-SAFE. That's 866-780-7233. And we'll be able to connect you to any of Wade's information, let you take the RESA. We, we are about education on this program. And so we're, we're just so grateful to have Wade with us on the show today. And uh, I just want to say thank you to, to Wade and to for all of you who are listening. You know, Hunter and I both went through the Retirement Income Certified Professional Program a couple of years ago. And so adding that to our knowledge base and then the continuing education that comes from it. You know, I'll always say that you want to work with someone who, who knows what other people don't know. And when we got into the Retirement Income Certified Professional Program, we learned very quickly, oh, there's a whole level of things that we're not up to par on that we need to be up to par on so that we can share this information uh, with all of our clients. And so we're so grateful for the, for all of our colleagues and for our teachers, our professors, uh, professors, our friends that we've met through this program. It's been fantastic. So if you're listening right now, you know, we're, we're going to be talking about something today. And I know you're, everyone's probably thinking, well, what's it going to be about? Well, if you're watching, you can already see because <laughs> we've got Wade's newest updated book, uh, version four, the fourth edition of his reverse mortgages book. And I'll just say this, you know, 15 years on the show, everyone that listens know that I'm an insurance person. I deal with the protected side of things, annuities, life insurance, retirement income planning, also then the tax side of things. But inside our office, we offer all sides of things. You know, Hunter is an IAR and he deals with the stocks, the bonds, the mutual funds. We also have Medicare specialists on our team. So whether it's Social Security planning, whether it's Medicare planning, whether it's income planning for the future, we've got all bases covered. And that's why education is so important to us. But And that's why we have people like Wade Fowl on the show today. So here's what I want to do. I want to take a quick break. Whenever we come back, we're going to jump into this concept of this bad word. You know, the first bad word for many years was the annuity word. I called it the A word. You had to be careful sharing the A word. But those of you who are now more educated because of what we do and many other people do, we know that's not a bad word anymore. Income specialists and people with their PhDs agree about the power of annuities and retirement income planning. And now we want to talk about something that can also oftentimes be a bad word, but you're going to find out if you stay with us today why it's not and why it's one of the most powerful untapped tools in your retirement tool belt. Call us anytime if you want our information. It's 866-780-7233, and there's always someone standing by to help. So friends, if you're just now joining us today, we have Dr. Wade Fowl with us on the show. For years on Safe Money Radio, you've heard me talking about Roth IRAs, and you've heard me talk about cash value life insurance. And those are the two main ways to develop and use tax-free income in retirement. There's also muni bonds, but there's one little loophole with muni bonds. People don't realize it's not completely tax-free when it comes to muni bonds because you've got the interest earned that's added into Medicare premium potential uh, cost there, and then also your Social Security threshold. So mainly Roth IRAs and life insurance, but there's one that we have not talked about ever on the show, and it's untapped, and a lot of people don't use it because they've been given bad information. And that's the concept of reverse mortgages. And so, Wade, I want to share this. You know, we've got your book here on the screen for everyone to see if they're watching. They can go to Amazon and order a copy of this brand new edition. But you say this on page 29 regarding reverse mortgages. You say reverse mortgages have been portrayed as a desperate last resort. Why is it that there's such a bad rap regarding reverse mortgages? Yeah, I mean, th that's an interesting question because definitely there is a bad rap. And even with, so I'm not in the reverse mortgage world and just looking at retirement planning, I know I had to look at reverse mortgages at some point, but I wasn't in any particular hurry because of the bad reputation they have. Uh, yeah. But I, I think it's mainly just driven by, there's been a lot of television commercials. There was one company in particular that ran a lot of celebrity endorsements. It was Fred Thompson over the years. We've had Alec Trebek, Tom Selleck, um, Henry Winkler, 
different individuals who are in late night commercials talking about reverse mortgages. And it just kind of gave a, a shady kind of vibe of these late night infomercials. Uh, at, at the end of the day, those were commercials that were direct to consumers and often were focused on individuals who may not really have other options. And so they need to tap into their home equity just to survive in retirement. And it really led to the bypassing of the financial professional world of financial advisors, of, of people who do have assets, can build more comprehensive retirement plans. Just dismissing reverse mortgages is not even something worth thinking about because this was something only you use with a late night commercial if you have no other options when the reality is, and this is really what got me interested in the first place is, no, you can build a responsible, comprehensive retirement plan and coordinating that with a reverse mortgage can really open up a lot of interesting opportunities. I think we're going to talk about today, but that's people with assets think reverse mortgages are for people who don't have assets or who don't have other options. Right. And the reality is that I'm not in the book. I'm not focused on people who don't have other options. I'm really focused on people who have home equity and want to use it strategically as part of a complete retirement plan to get the most power out of their assets so that they can meet their spending needs and, and leave the most legacy at the end of retirement as well. Excellent. Well, I'll say this to all of our listeners. You know, there's a reason why I have guest experts on the show, because I can't be an expert in all things. And this is definitely one one chink in my armor. When I got into the RICP program and I started reading and learning about reverse mortgages, I thought I do. My knowledge level is nowhere near where it needs to be regarding this. So I want to learn from the experts, from the people that have written books about it, written articles about it, been on talk shows about it, and that sort of thing. So we're so thankful to have Wade Fowl with us on the show today. And I, you know, we may jump over the, all over the place a little bit because I, I learned enough to know in preparing for this. Having read the newest version of the book, I thought there's no way we can do this show in one show. <laughs> I got to have him back on again. So there maybe will be episode four on your way to five. Um, <laughs> But I know this. We I, I want to I want to talk about several things, and as different things come to mind, I'm thinking through just like the listeners are right now. Um, so fair warning to you if you're listening on the radio and not watching this on YouTube. There's no way we're going to get all this information covered in a 30 minute show. This is going to be an hour long show, and then we're going to have to have him back on again. So just stay with us. Um, let me let me ask you this: Why do you think the uh, the bad rap, if you will, for reverse mortgages. Why do you see that starting to change? Is it that there's more information that's coming out and people are starting to, um, they're starting to learn enough to know that, hey, this may be an asset I haven't tapped into and I had the wrong information. I mean, what, what is it that's changing the trend? Well, well, yeah, there certainly have been a lot of misconceptions and uh, people are just looking for options and, and never really considering the reverse mortgage in the past, whereas there has been more positive media coverage. I guess the other aspect of the, the negative perception has been media coverage that wasn't always, um, it was written from the office. So what happens sometimes is you have adult children who thought they were going to inherit their parents' house and found out their parents decided to spend the equity for their own retirement, uh, just like they might spend their investment accounts. But you didn't see media stories saying, well, I thought I was going to inherit my, my parents' IRA, but they spent it on their own retirement. You did right. see media coverage saying, well, I thought I was going to inherit my parents' home, but they spent the home equity on their retirement. And that was another angle of where there was some negative media coverage that ultimately people are starting to realize, no, the, <laughs> your home is your asset. And, and in terms of like money is fungible, this is the idea that by strategically using home equity, you can help preserve more investment assets and actually leave a larger uh, legacy if that's your intention. But a lot of times with those last resort cases, there wasn't going to be a, a legacy anyway. And that's where uh, we're just seeing more and more attention, to not going that direction. <laughs> that That's great. And that's where the light bulb really came on for me as I was reading your book. I thought, when you look at other comparable assets, you mentioned the IRA or the 401k or someone's TSP, whatever it is they have their retirement wealth built up in, we always think about we build those up until retirement and then we start spending them down for our retirement income plan. But we never think about the home and we're OK with spending down the 401k. We're OK with spending down the IRA, but not the mortgage in our home. And so that's what really caught my attention, especially because tax free is what gets my attention. So we're going to be talking more about this. Stay with us on the show today. If you want more information, call anytime 866-780-7233. You need to go to Amazon and order a copy of Dr. Wade Fowl's book and get the most recent updated copy of this. So 866-780-7233. This is Brad Pistole, your host of Safe Money Radio. I'll be right back after this informative message.
What if you could get almost 6% interest guaranteed for three or five years? That's way more than banks are currently offering. Don't let your retirement savings get less than the best guaranteed return. Call us now for your short-term money solutions at 866-780-SAFE. That's 866-780-7233. Some fixed annuity contracts even let you access as much as 10% of your annuity balance surrender penalty free. Once again, you can call us at 866-780-SAFE. That's 866-780-7233. Fixed annuities are backed up by the claims paying ability of the issuing life insurance company and are not FDIC insured. We have software to help you choose from hundreds of highly rated life insurance companies. Now back to more Safe Money Radio with your host, Brad Pistol. Thank you for tuning in to Safe Money Radio. I am Brad Pistole, a market risk mitigation specialist helping clients with retirement money preservation and income planning. So friends, if you're just now joining us today and if you're watching online, you know we have Dr. Wade Fowl on the show with us again today. And we're talking about his book on reverse mortgages and the power to using that in your retirement income plan when used the right way. So Wade, I want to share this. In your book, you say that Home equity represents 46% of the overall net worth for Americans age 65 to 74. That really caught my attention. And it's 55% for those over the age of 75. You then say that it's estimated that housing expenses like property tax, utility bills, and home maintenance represents 30% of the entire household budget. So talk about the significance of this when it comes to retirement income planning for an individual. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Housing is huge. And if you look at household assets for retirement, the, the big three are going to be the home home equity for individuals who own a home. Social security, uh, which I know you'll probably have shows with Heather Schreiber talking about that, that people might spend 20 minutes deciding on a social security claiming strategy when it could be one of the biggest assets they have alongside home equity and in their investment portfolio. People tend to put a lot more focus on the investment portfolio and kind of dismiss home equity or even social security, even though these are huge assets for typical American retirements. And the default is, well, I'm just, I'm not gonna touch the home. It's it's there as kind of my contingency fund. If if something goes wrong, I could either sell the home and, and move somewhere else, or I could possibly open a reverse mortgage as that last resort option later in retirement. But otherwise I'm gonna focus on just spending from my other investment assets in retirement. And once you you move away from that concept and start looking at, well, what if I strategically incorporate the reverse mortgage in more quickly and and spend some time learning about how to more strategically use this asset that's for like like different numbers. It could be up to two thirds of the asset base of a lot of retirees. You you can't really just ignore an asset of that size. And, And there are tools, strategies, techniques to incorporate that asset in a plan that can lead to better financial planning outcomes than to simply say, okay, well, the home is gonna, I'll live in my home, but (laughs) I'm not gonna otherwise consider it as part of my retirement other than possibly as a last resort where if I do run out of investments, then I'll think about what I'm gonna do with my home at that point. Yeah, and building on that. So I know that you say in the book, conventional thinking is overly constraining and counterproductive. And then you say initiating the reverse mortgage earlier and coordinating spending from your home equity throughout retirement can help meet your spending goals while providing a larger legacy. Now, that's what gets people's attention because a lot of people want to leave a legacy to their children. So talk about how initiating a reverse mortgage earlier in life could help provide a larger legacy on down the road. Mm -hmm. And this, yeah, this really gets into the issue of how retirement risk is different from pre-retirement risk. And I'm sure you probably have episodes where you've talked about the idea of sequence of returns risk and and so forth. All the time. Yeah. yeah, this idea that if the financial markets go down and if your portfolio loses value, if you're forced to sell from that portfolio at a loss, it can really dig a hole for the portfolio that becomes difficult to recover from. And so the early research on reverse mortgages was about treating it as this buffer asset idea where you have this growing line of credit on the reverse mortgage that you can tap into on a temporary basis to cover spending needs when your portfolio is in trouble so that you create more of a runway for your portfolio to recover and to not have to sell from it at a loss. And that's the, the synergy. It's like this idea, the sequence of returns risk. It's 
really interesting math how small changes to distributions from your portfolio can have huge long-term impacts on how much of your portfolio is left. So a reverse mortgage, it, it's a loan. You're borrowing from the home equity. But when I talk about you can leave a larger legacy, I define that as what's left in your investments plus the value of your home minus the loan balance due on the reverse mortgage. And the math is really in favor of this idea that after repaying that loan balance, the, the benefit you created for your investments was greater so that you still have some extra money left over after repaying the loan balance. And so you created a larger overall legacy. And most ch adult children don't want to inherit the home or they don't want to live in the home at the very least. And so this creates a way, if they did want to live in the home, well, they can use that larger investment inheritance to pay down the loan balance and, and keep the home. Otherwise, they've, they've got a bigger investment balance. They can sell the home, uh, pay off the loan balance, and, and have more money left over at the end. And that's the idea about how it's, the odds are really in favor of this idea of leaving a larger legacy by incorporating that reverse mortgage into the planning process earlier rather than saving it as a last resort at the very end. That's so good. And I'm sure if you're listening right now and you've never thought much about reverse mortgages or how to tap into your own resource there, your, your mind's probably spinning with all kinds of questions. And this is just the first part of the show. The second half of the show, we're really going to jump into what a reverse mortgage is, the different types, how they work, common misconceptions. So stay with us. And I, I want to just say this because Wade tapped into so many great points there. You know, in today's world, we don't live in Mayberry anymore. It's not mom here and, and mom and dad and then grandma and grandpa and then our kids are right next door and everyone gathers on the front porch after supper every night to, to talk. It's kids that are in California and they're in Mississippi, then they're in Georgia and they're all over the place. So when someone passes and they pass that spouse, that house on, uh, after the second spouse passes, then a kid may be dealing with a major issue because they live halfway across the country and now they have something they have to sell or um, it, there's just a lot that's involved in that process. So we want to we want to talk more about this on today's show. We definitely want you to go to Amazon and pick up a copy of Wade's book so that you can read more about this for yourself. But stay with us. Our number is 866-780-SAFE. That's 866-780-7233. And right after this break, we'll be back with more information about how you can tap into your home equity and use it tax-free in your own retirement income plan. 866-780-7233. There's always someone standing by to take your call. Well, I must take a short break. This is Brad Pistole, and you're listening to Safe Money Radio. Let's pause for some exciting announcements. Do you own an annuity? Do you understand what it does, how it works, and if it's right for your retirement plan? Some annuities have fees that might not be justified by their benefits. Some annuities are exposed to significant market risk. Worse yet, if an annuity was sold without proper planning, it can cause unintended consequences for your retirement. If you own an annuity, it's probably a good idea to find out more about how it works and if it's right for you. It's time to give Brad Pistole a call now at 866-780-SAFE. That's 866-780-7233. Brad will help you review the features and benefits of annuities you currently own without any obligation. Once again, you can call Brad now at 866-780-SAFE. That's 866 866- 780-7233. You're listening to Safe Money Radio with your host, Brad Pistol. Welcome back to Safe Money Radio. I'm Brad Pistol, a certified financial fiduciary and a safe money retirement specialist. So friends, on today's show, we have Dr. Wade Fowl with us, and we're we're grateful for him being back as a regular on the show. We've been talking about the fourth edition to his new book regarding reverse mortgages. And, you know, Wade, in your book, you talk about two primary ways that a reverse mortgage can help retirees. I think that's really where the rubber meets the road. People hear these concepts about them, some good, some bad. But the bottom line is, well, how's this going to help me? So talk about the, the primary ways that a reverse mortgage can help an individual in retirement. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, when we started to touch on one of those ideas in the, the previous segment, this idea that you have this resource and we should talk about the growing line of credit and what that means and how it happens in the first place at some point yeah. in the episode. But you have yes. this growing line of credit that can't decline in value that you can tap into to meet your spending needs. And it's that that tax-free income because it's proceeds from a loan. And just coincidentally, there's a whole parallel conversation in the reverse mortgage world that matches the life insurance world in terms of the cash value of life insurance. And I, I learned about that first on the reverse mortgage side. I thought, oh, the, the life insurance world's copying the reverse mortgage conversation when the reality was it actually evolved in reverse. <laughs> the the yeah. reverse mortgage world was able to use the same concepts from the life insurance world that you have this growing asset-based resource, this line of credit that you can tap into and borrow from. Uh, because it's proceeds from a loan, it does not go into your adjusted gross income. It's not going to impact your Social Security taxes, your your Medicare surcharges, uh, anything else. But it can meet your spending needs without generating taxable income. And so that's another way you can strategically, when I would otherwise generate more taxes if I took out of the IRA, I might tap into the reverse mortgage to to avoid having that situation happen. Uh, but it, you you tap into it as strategic points to protect your investment portfolio. Mm-hmm. And that's where the early research was. And that gets extended as well. Like a, now more and more Americans are carrying traditional forward mortgages, traditional mortgages into retirement that have these fixed repayment obligations. And you can refinance to a reverse mortgage and take away those fixed repayment obligations from the early retirement years and push them off to later in retirement when, the, when you ultimately leave the home. And that can help manage that sequence of returns risk because you've created a lot more flexibility about not being forced to sell from your portfolio to pay your mortgage if there's a market downturn. So that's really a cousin of strategically using this reverse mortgage to help protect your portfolio, to reduce the distribution pressure on your portfolio, to allow your portfolio to ultimately grow more over time. That can, again, more than compensate for the costs involved with the reverse mortgage. And uh, that a lot of the, the different techniques are somehow connected to that concept. The other really primary way you could think about a reverse mortgage, too, is there's something called the 10-year payment option. And it's it's hard to say that term. It's not 10-year, ten tenure, like a tenured professor. Yes. But that, that works a lot like a, an annuity. It, it does have the caveat. It's not necessarily guaranteed for life. If you need to move out of the house, the payments would end. But if you do stay in the house for your rest, the rest of your life, It works a lot like an income annuity in that you get this monthly payment. Even if you use more than the available borrowing capacity of the reverse mortgage, you continue to receive those monthly payments for as long as you're remaining eligible for the loan, which can be for a lifetime as a responsible retirement plan where you do decide to and are able to stay in the home uh, through age 100 or beyond. Um, That's the other way you can really think about it, too. Well, I want to just recap real quick because for listeners who maybe have never heard this concept, their head might be spinning a little bit right now. And I want to make sure that I heard you say something correctly. So, you know, I will always use the example of 01, 08, now 2022. And I'll always say, hey, there are a lot of innocent people who worked really hard their entire career and they just so happened to have retired on December 31st or whatever the date is. Normally it's December 31st. And right at the beginning of that very first week of their retirement, Lo and behold, the market decided to flip upside down and start going downhill. And if they were in an unprotected uh, type of platform, maybe they were all in stocks uh, or heavy in stocks, then you have the sequence of returns risk. And all of a sudden, they they retire, they start taking distributions while paying a fee, while the market's going backwards, and that's the formula for a disaster. And so a couple of big concepts here for me that really catch my attention when you're talking about retirement income planning – Using a reverse mortgage at, in the right time and in the right way could allow you to avoid the downward turn. You don't have to sell off investments because you could tap into this resource. And the second thing is when you tap into that resource, you're taking tax-free income out, whereas if you were taking it from a 401k, it's taxable. So did, is that correct? Talk, talk about right, that. Right, right. And, and yeah, I've been 20, 2022 is a classic example of not only were stocks losing, but because interest rates were rising, it was causing double-digit losses for a lot of people who may have had bond funds of various types. Yeah. And so when you're having double-digit losses on both your stocks and your bonds, if you had just retired January 1st, 2022, that was a perfect case study of okay, you don't have to panic. Let's not sell from this portfolio that's down 10% plus. Let's instead tap into the reverse mortgage to meet our our spending needs on a temporary basis 
so that we yes. can give our chance the, the portfolio a chance to recover. And you never know. In American history, often when markets go down, they do come back up. It's been, been a nice aspect of what we've seen. And certainly we saw that in 2023 with a, a strong market recovery. If you yes. could have avoided selling from your portfolio in 2022, you'd be in pretty good shape again today. And the reverse mortgage could have been the tool that, that helped facilitate getting through that market downturn. Absolutely. So friends, uh, I know it's a lot of information. That's why we want you to read the book. <laughs> and and I will say this just so that you know, disclaimer, I don't make one penny from reverse mortgages or talking about reverse mortgages. I'm not going to try to, if you call into our show, we're not going to try to get you in here to do something that we're, we're making money off of selling you a reverse mortgage. We have nothing to do with that. We're providing the information. We want to educate our listeners. We want to put them in touch with the people who know the most about it. And if that's something that you need to pursue, we can put you in touch with the right people. We really just want to educate you regarding all the different aspects that are available to you to develop a complete retirement income plan. And that's why we have done what we've done with the RICP program. We want to make sure that you're working with retirement income certified professionals who have access to all the different tools that are there to help you. So call us anytime at 866-780-SAFE. That's 866-780-7233. Request a free financial consultation. Ask for a copy of my book or Wade's book. We'll be glad to help you out. So there's always someone standing by to take your call. Well, I must take a short break. This is Brad Pistol, and you're listening to Safe Money Radio. Let's pause for some exciting announcements. The market goes up and the market goes down. It always has and it always will. But if you are in or near retirement, do you have the time to wait for the market to go through these cycles? Think about it. Having your money invested in the market is like walking next to the edge of a cliff. What if you lose your step? What if the edge gives way? What if a strong wind blows you over the side? It is good to stay away from the edge of disaster in life. And when it comes to being exposed to financial risk, it is no different. Shouldn't you at least try to protect the money you depend on for your retirement income? Pick up the phone and call us now to receive your complimentary safe money information kit and a copy of Brad's best-selling book, Bulletproof, The Safe and Secure Retirement Income Plan. Our phone number is 866-780-SAFE. That's 866-780-7233. Now back to more Safe Money Radio with your host, Brad Pistol. Welcome back to Safe Money Radio. I'm Brad Pistol, a certified financial fiduciary and a safe money retirement specialist. So Wade, on today's show, we've been talking about, and we haven't even said this phrase yet, but heckums. So explain to us what, what exactly is a heckum? Uh-huh. Yeah, absolutely. So the heckum is the abbreviations HECM is how you spell that, but it's it stands for Home Equity Conversion Mortgage, and it's the uh, there are some proprietary reverse mortgages, and actually they're they're becoming more popular and maybe something to look at if your home is worth substantially more than a million dollars. But for most people, and the vast majority of reverse mortgages out there are, are referring to this idea of the HECM, which is a government administered program. It was created during the Reagan administration. It usually gets revamped every five years or so. We're kind of overdue. The last big revamp was in 2017. But okay. it's government-administered, government-insured. It's done through private lenders, but private lenders who have to follow the, the terms and regulations set forth through the Housing and Urban Development, Federal Housing Authority, for the Home Equity Conversion Mortgage Program. And there are two different types of HECMs. There's the fixed-rate HECM and the variable-rate HECM. The fixed rate HECMs are not so common, and uh, I used to say more than 90% of HECMs were the variable rate HECM. Actually, in the, with the new book update in 2023, 99.1% were the variable rate HECM. Wow. That's the one with the growing line of credit. If you have a fixed okay. rate HECM, there is no line of credit. So when we talk about the line of credit, we're talking about a variable rate home equity conversion mortgage or HECM, which is administered through the federal government, but through, through private lenders, who follow the rules and regulations set by the, the federal government and insured by the federal government, government mortgage insurance fund. We'll, we'll talk about that for a minute. How do, once someone does 
let's say they set up a fixed or a variable rate because that's what 99% of people are doing, and they've got the reverse mortgage in place and they start taking loans from it. How do loan repayments work? How does that happen? Mm -hmm. So the the loan repayments are not on any sort of fixed schedule, which makes it different from traditional uh, reverse traditional mortgages, I should say. Uh, right. It you can make voluntary repayments. You've got really there's this principal limit which consists of what you've borrowed, your loan balance plus the remaining line of credit. And so if you've borrowed money, you can voluntarily make repayments and move that back into the line of credit so that your line of credit is subsequently growing instead of your, your loan balance. You do need to maintain a minimal $50 or $100 loan balance to keep it open. Otherwise, the rest can be line, the line of credit. And then the, you don't have to make any repayments until the loan becomes due, which is triggered by leaving the home for at least a year, either or if, if passing away, I should say, or you move out of the home and don't intend to return and are away from the home for at least a year. The, and, and or you do not maintain basic homeowner obligations, such as paying your property taxes or maintaining homeowner's insurance or doing basic home upkeep. Uh, as long as you're maintaining the home, paying your property taxes, uh, living in the home, the loan balance is not due until you decide ultimately to leave the home either on your own initiative or <laughs> uh, feet first through the door. But <laughs> right, right. That, that's what triggers the loan balance to become due. And it, it's a non-recourse loan. We should add that as well. So if you've, you've had this loan for a long time, it's possible the loan, especially if the home value stagnates, the loan balance could be greater than the home is worth. Okay. But you're not on the hook or your beneficiaries are not on the hook to pay back more than the home is worth at 95% of the appraised home value. So one of the misconceptions is you lose the title to the home with a reverse mortgage, and that's simply not true at all. Uh, if the time comes and the loan balance is less than the home is worth, you or your beneficiaries can sell the home, repay the loan balance, keep the difference. If the loan balance is significantly more than the home could be sold for, you can do a deed in lieu of foreclosure and not even have to worry about it. Then you just turn over the keys and you've extinguished the debt in that manner. You're not responsible for anything beyond the home itself at that point. So that's the other way to, in these cases where you have the loan balance for a very long time, you might also benefit from that non-recourse aspect, which is part of the, the reason reverse mortgages can be expensive are there's mortgage insurance premiums, which you pay as a borrower that help to facilitate protections like that, as well as protections that you can tap into your, your line of credit. It's guaranteed. It's not like a home, a HELOC, home equity line of credit that right. can be frozen or canceled whenever there's any sort of market downturn, which takes away its value to help you <laughs> spend and not have to spend from your portfolio during market downturns. That's the HECM protects you so that you have this resource. You're, you're paying mortgage insurance premiums to have this resource, uh, even if there's a market a significant market downturn where most HELOCs, like in 2020, a lot of HELOCs where you, you can tap into them during the pandemic in yeah. 2008 with the financial crisis. One of the, the research teams that really got interested in reverse mortgages, they had HELOCs for all their clients in 2008, and they were all frozen or canceled during the financial crisis. So they looked for alternatives, and that's the HECM, the Home Equity Conversion Mortgage provided okay. such an alternative where there are protections in place that you can tap into it, even if the stock market's down 40%. And that's exactly when you would want to tap into this type of resource. Yes. And that, that brings up two quick questions that kind of tie together. I know that there is an age, an age limit or an age restriction on, on, on or a HECM. And then, uh, so what is the age limit on this? Yes. For the, the HECM program, you do have to be 62 or older to be a borrower. Uh, it's been about actually nine years, I think, at this point, where there are non-spousal, non-borrowing spouse protections put into place, where if one spouse is older than 62, the other is younger than 62, you can still start the HECM, and that younger spouse will be, they can't borrow, but they're protected that they can also stay in the home for as long as they're maintaining the paying property taxes and so forth. Um, Very good. If, if the spouses are close in age, it's probably worthwhile to wait until both are 62 so they can both be borrowers. And okay. with those proprietary reverse mortgages that are out there, depending on the state, you can sometimes get access to those as early as 60 or even 55. But the okay. HECM program is 62 and older. So making sure I heard that correctly for our listeners, because I know this happens a lot. So let's say the borrower is 62, but the spouse is 45. They 45-year-old can't be a borrower, but they can stay in the home. For the 
for the lifetime for their lifetime, correct? Under... Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're protected to stay in the home as well. Very and good. the uh, borrowing capacity would be based on the younger individual. So okay. and when they created these protections, they made the tables all the way down to age 18. So you could okay. be 62 with an 18 year old spouse and still have access to the reverse mortgage and the, the tables will account for your situation. <laughs> I'm sure it happens. <laughs> There's a reason it got written in, right? So, and then one more question regarding that. I'm sure multiple people listening, they have two homes or three homes. They've got a lake house down in Branson or whatever. Um, if this is on the primary mm -hmm. mortgage home where you reside, correct? Yes, it has to be classified as your primary residence. You cannot use the HECM program with secondary homes or yeah. vacation homes. It's got to be your primary residence. So before all of you out there think, oh, I've got three properties, I'm going to get three loans going here. <laughs> all tax-free income. Can't do that. So. Well, friends, I'm so grateful to have Dr. Wade Fowl on the show with us again. You know, we were in Denver together just a few weeks ago, and I had the blessing and the honor, the privilege of introducing Wade to a group of about 250 different uh, financial experts who were there for this conference. And there were incredible people. Tom Hegna was there. Heather Schreiber was there. Um, Peyton Manning was there. But here's what I noticed, the difference in all these different key speakers when Wade got up to speak hands started popping up right and left. And I'm sure it was distracting to Wade. He's up there trying to present and they just kept interrupting and asking questions, which I'm sure he loved this. But that's when as an as a financial professional who's out there with all these other advisors, you're like, he really was tapping in on stuff that's critically important to them because they just kept asking all kinds of questions about his retirement research. So we're, we're thankful to have him on the show. Today, we've been honed in on and focused in on reverse mortgages, and I want to go into one last section here. So let's talk about, we mentioned this on the last segment, let's talk about the non-borrowing spouse and, and also children of the homeowner. Uh, how does a reverse mortgage affect them, and what are some of the misconceptions that are out there today regarding this? Mm -hmm. So the, the non-borrowing spouse, that's the situation where somebody was younger than 62, and until I think it was 2015 when they created the protections for non-borrowing spouses. Before then, if the borrower passed away or entered a nursing home, left the home for a year, uh, the loan balance would become due. And so that was, for, especially for people using as a last resort, problematic for the non-borrowing spouse in that scenario. So now since, I believe, 2015, if I've got my history right, it's mentioned in the book there, <laughs> but uh, there, there's been protections for eligible non-borrowing spouses so that they can, be, it, they can do everything a borrower can do except take more money out, but they otherwise right. have the protections to stay in the home. The loan balance does not become due until they also uh, leave the home as well. And then for the, the children... Uh, it can start to get complicated if you've got children on the title and things, but we're for a more simple scenario where you have some adult children as well. Uh, so they're not really part of the process. You should certainly communicate with them and let them know what you're doing. And if you're using this strategically as part of the retirement plan, it's like I was saying earlier, your legacy is what's left in the investments plus the value of the home minus the loan balance due and the synergies with managing sequence of returns, risk and so forth. You can leave more in the investment portfolio to, to allow those adult children to then pay off the loan balance and still have a bigger uh, inheritance at the end as well. They don't need to receive the home for their inheritance. They instead can receive the value of the home through the investments and then some. And so that's how ultimately they can benefit. Now, if it's a last resort scenario where there are no investment assets yeah. and the home is all there is, that's where some of that negative media coverage was where those adult children may have been expecting to inherit the home, but then found out there was actually a reverse mortgage on the home and those parents spent the home equity on their own retirement mm -hmm. and, and the loan balances may be equal or in excess of what the home was worth. And so there's no inheritance left at that point, but you did not lose the title to the home. So if the loan balance is less than the home is worth, the adult children could, they have up to a year to work with the lender to sell the home and then re uh, keep any of the difference after repaying that loan balance. Very good. Well, I, I know that our good friend Ed Slot will always say your number one priority in retirement should be to not become a burden on your children, you know, during your retirement years. And so this untapped assets here, and you just use the example of if it's used as a last resort, that means they've spent down all of their other assets that they had saved for retirement. Well, if you don't tap into the home, what's going to happen? If you don't tap into it and you're out of investments, you're going to live with your children or something else is going to happen that's going to create other kinds of issues. So this really is an untapped source. So I want to talk about this um, 
Talk about having a line of credit. I know because he lets me share it on the show, a good friend of yours, Kevin Lynch, who was a colleague at the American College, is a client of mine from North Carolina, and he, he has a line of credit. He very powerfully uses a reverse mortgage in his own retirement income plan. He just retired this year at the beginning of 2024. What is the power to establishing a line of credit uh, with a reverse mortgage, and how does this work? Yeah, and so this is something that sounds too good to be true, but if we just yeah. walk through the process, it'll start to make more sense. And it's really another, this happens with Social Security too, where like people, the government makes rules, and then people figure out how to work with those rules to get uh, better outcomes that may not have been anticipated by the policymakers. And so I think the idea was, if you opened a reverse mortgage, it was assumed you'd borrow everything you could from it. And so then you'd have a loan balance, and then your loan balance is going to grow over time. Well, the interesting trick that financial planners started to discover around the 2008, 2009, the, the research was published in this area in like 2011, 2012, financial advisors figured out you do have to maintain, say, a $50, $100 loan balance to keep it open, but the rest could be in the line of credit. And the line of credit is growing at the same rate that the loan balance would be growing. And the odd, now, if you wait to open the reverse mortgage, you might be able to get access to more funds because as you get older, you'll get a higher percentage that you can borrow. And if the home is appreciating over time, you get a higher percentage of an appreciating home. So waiting to open the reverse mortgage should, on average, lead to a bigger uh, access to funds. But this right. is usually dwarfed by the idea that you know, if I open it as soon as I can at age 62, then I start this process of line of credit growth that I've done the simulations and the historical data that I they talk about in the book, you know, like 60, 70% of the time, you'll have more line of credit later by opening it sooner and letting it grow than if you waited until later. Plus, if you open it sooner, you can always refinance. And this is something we saw happen a lot in 2001, 2000, 2021, 2022. Okay. Interest rates were going down and homes were appreciating dramatically Yes. And that was creating the scenario, oh, maybe I could have got more credit if I had waited in that case. Well, yeah. if you already opened it, you simply refinance. Uh, there's minimal additional car charges to refinance. And then you get that higher line of credit. So by opening it sooner rather than later, the odds are you're going to have more borrowing capacity. And if yeah. you're in the scenario where you don't have more borrowing capacity, you simply refinance and then you get the more borrowing capacity. You can yeah. refinance in the future, but you can't go back in time to <laughs> make a different decision. So that's you've got this access to this growing line of credit that can be a huge resource in retirement for so many different uh, means. We've talked about spending from the portfolio just to during market downturns. But we could, I mean, there's many other possible ways you could think about using that growing line of credit to help manage retirement risk and to get those better financial planning outcomes. Which is an entire other show that I want to have. So, <laughs> so I want to, I just kind of want to wrap up by saying this. First of all, to tap on one more thing because it's so important in all the messages and all my shows. When you talk about tapping into this resource and you have income from the reverse mortgage, is it taxable or tax free? Way to want to make sure they heard that. It's proceeds from a loan, so it's it's tax free. You're spending your own equity. <laughs> you're spending right. tax. You're yeah. able to meet your spending needs without generating taxable income. So you're not messing with your adjusted gross income. You're not impacting Social Security taxes, Medicare premium surcharges, or anything else. It's tax free distributions from your asset base. So if you're in the middle of this perfect storm where your your investments are all in the market and they're all tax deferred and the market's going down. And you're thinking through what I call the quadruple whammy. That's if you take distributions while experiencing losses, while paying fees, while paying taxes on the distribution, it will wipe you out so quickly. <laughs> this gives you an asset here where you can keep the distribution going, no tax because it's from a loan. So you don't have to spend down something in a bear market that's taxable. Um, you can allow that to go through the cycle that it needs to go through while you're while you're using a, a tax-free line of credit and distributions from your home. So as we wrap up, just quick question, and maybe this is where we'll start the next show, but in summary, maybe who would be the, a, a perfect candidate for it and who wouldn't be in your, in your opinion? Well, maybe to just mention who wouldn't be a good candidate start, good. and then we can get more into the, the perfect candidates. Um, yeah. If you're pretty sure you're going to move in the next few years, I, I do generally suggest waiting until you're in the home that you anticipate staying in. Of course, you never know. People will, may move at some point, but Right. If you think you're in the home that you anticipate staying in, 
that's a better starting point. I also mentioned that if both spouses are close in age, if, as soon as the first one turns 62, if the other one's 60, it's probably worth waiting until they're both 62. And then who's the other aspect of who wouldn't be a good candidate is, this. I, I talk about using it as part of a responsible plan. If you don't have a reverse mortgage, you can't spend from your home equity. Well, if you're not responsible and if getting access to your home equity is going to cause you to just spend it frivolously yeah. and really harm your long-term future potential, like you, you don't have the responsibility to manage this additional resource without just spending it because, oh, because the money's there. Okay, let's spend it. Uh, then it's kind of like Odysseus tying himself to the mast to protect himself from the, the siren call. You may be better off without a reverse mortgage, so you're not tempted to spend your home equity. But then who's a good candidate? If you have that responsibility and you're just looking, how can I coordinate my different assets in the most effective manner? And both spouses are 62 and you're in the home that you anticipate staying in. The, and, and you're, well, so you, if you're thinking about the HECM program, your home's probably not dramatically worth, worth dramatically more than a million dollars. This is really something more for middle class or mass affluent retirees as well. That would all be a good kind of base scenario. And if you do have a home that's worth dramatically more than that, you might consider a proprietary reverse mortgage as well. But that would be the, the basics of a, like a good candidate or a good case scenario to look at. Very, very good. Well, friends, if you're listening or watching right now, uh, again, if you're listening, just go go to YouTube, go online, type in Brad Pistol reverse mortgages or Brad Pistol, Dr. Wade Fowl. It will pop up this uh, show. And we do want to say this. We're, we're, all the information is covered in his book. You can certainly go to Amazon and get a copy of it. We're going to be talking about this more in the future, and we're so thankful to have shared this information with you today. And, you know, if you're just now listening to him for the very first time, just a week ago, we had world-renowned economist Tom Hegna on, and we were talking about his new show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And I was actually in New York to do a segment of that show. That's We just found out this morning that's going to air in either late February or early March on Fox Business, but it's already up online, the fuel, full interview. Just go to YouTube and you can type that in. But we had Tom Hegna on. We've had Dr. Wade Fowle on today. Heather Schreiber is going to be on talking about Social Security the first week of March. And then Ed Slot's going to be on talking about taxes in middle of March. So we've got quite a lineup uh, that's coming up here in the next few weeks. We want to put the key professionals in front of you every week to make sure you know the information that you need to know to develop the best retirement income plan for you and for your family. If we can ever help in any way, call us at 866-780-SAFE. That's 866-780-7233. And Wade, thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to have you back on again soon, but thank you. Thank you, Brad. It's always a pleasure. Well, I'm about out of time, and I would like to thank you for listening to Safe Money Radio. If you're serious about your financial future, give me a call and together we'll get your retirement savings on the fast track to accumulation while reducing exposure to market losses. Thanks for listening and until next time at the same time, I'm Brad Pistole reminding you to stay safe so you can step into a secure future. Save money, radio. Your money savings out. You've been listening to Safe Money Radio with your host, Brad Pistol. Find out how to contractually guarantee that your hard-earned money is safe while avoiding market loss so you can have the retirement that you deserve. Call Brad Pistol now for your complimentary Safe Money book and Safe Money information kit at 866-780-SAFE. That's 866-780-7233. The preceding information does not represent tax, legal, or investment advice. Surrender charges apply to base contracts. Optional lifetime income benefit riders are used to calculate lifetime payments only and are not available for cash surrender or in a death benefit unless specified in the annuity contract. Fees may apply. Guarantees are based on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the insurance company. No information presented today should be acted upon without meeting with a qualified and licensed professional. Obviously, by calling us now, you are just taking the first step towards protecting your retirement. It's important that you read all insurance contract disclosures carefully before making a purchase decision. Rates and returns mentioned on this program are subject to change without notice.